Sure. So I have started the recording. So everything we hear from now will be on the video that will be published on our website. So over to you, Sebastian. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So welcome everyone to the second webinar of our crisis proof systems series. Today we will talk about cloud native CI CD and GitOps. And my name is Sebastian Tickelkamp. I'm a DevOps engineer at Console. And I was focusing in the past a lot on CI CD solutions, mainly Jenkins. And nowadays I'm having a closer look on cloud native CI CD solutions and also on how to integrate GitOps into our daily work. And we will start with a short uh, portfolio overview of our company. So what we're doing here is we're doing, for example, IT consulting for cloud, um, test automation, project management, monitoring, and a lot of other things. We also offer um, IT solutions, for example, our console CM tool, or also an uh, E2E test automation um, suite called Zarkoli. And of course, we're also doing software engineering and IT operations here. Let's now get to the agenda for today. I will start with a small introduction on what is cloud native, what is the ICD and also GitOps. Then we will have a look on the three key aspects of this webinar in regard to cloud native CI CD and GitOps. And those aspects are time to market, ease of installation and maintainability. Then we will have a look on, on some tools on some CI CD and GitOps engines. And we will close the, or we'll then dive into a short live demo where we will deploy an application with Tekton as our CI engine and Argo CD as our GitOps solution. And then at the end, we will have some time for, for questions. So first of all, what is cloud native? Cloud native is an approach for building and delivering applications by using the advantages of a modern cloud computing or cl modern cloud environment. CI is continuous integration, and that's a practice where developers integrate their code into a shared repository continuously and yeah, as, as often as possible, so preferably several times a day. Then CD can, can stand for continuous delivery or deployment. And continuous delivery in this case is an approach where we have our code always in a state that is deployable. So we are able to deploy our, our code that is checked into Git or a shared repository at any given time. And continuous deployment is an approach where we then deploy automatically every change that we commit to our production environment. Then let's have a look at GitOps. GitOps is also an approach that can be described as um, we use Git as the single source of truth and then use this to sync everything that we have in Git with our target environment so that the desired state that is in Git is the same as the current deployed state. And since we are talking about crisis proof systems, we can have a look on how can we achieve this with our cloud native CI CD and GitOps approach. And if we have a look at the past, uh, usually, um, especially for, for big software monoliths, it was usual that the release time was a really long time. So for example, the release was every six months or, or maybe even a year. So there were thousands or millions of code changes in that one release and integrating, merging this and then deploying it usually was, was a real pain. And with uh, cloud native CI/CD and GitOps, we can improve on shortening our release cycle times. And then by creating a robust installation and maintainability routine, we are able to, to match the demand of our customers in a yeah, more more safer way and also um, in a small, smaller time frame. So usually in a crisis, the demands of a customer can change rapidly 
and we want to want to adjust our or be able to deploy our application also in regard of their of the customer's demands. And that is also what we will talk about in the next slide, because the key, the first key aspect is time to market. So this means we want to deliver the value to our customer as fast as possible and as often as possible. But since we want to deliver value, we just, we don't want to be fast alone, but we want to also deliver high quality. This can be achieved, for example, by, by using low risk releases where we will deploy small increments we take care of the database changes, so they usually need to be backwards compatible so that we don't break our application by database changes. And we usually try to use some kind of deployment strategy. And that's where we can also leverage the advantage of, of a cloud setup and also our, of applications running on Kubernetes, because usually the cloud providers have some mechanisms in place where we can, can use deployment strategies out of the box. For example, we can do canary deployments where we will only ship the latest release to a small amount of customers and see if everything works fine and then increase the amount over time. What we also want to do to achieve the high quality and the, the speed is to automate as much as possible. Usually if we have any human interaction, for example, in our deployment pipeline, this can lead to, to changes in the way we deploy because human interaction is not always the same. With automation, we can make sure that we get repeatable results and that those results are also comparable because if, if a deployment fails and we have it automated, we usually can be sure that the, the failure was due to the latest release. And if we're talking about our pipeline, a crucial point to deliver high quality is also to automate as much test as possible and to have a good um, test coverage as well. In combination with early feedback loops, we can make sure to reduce the risk of, of pushing defects to production. And the, defect, uh, the feedback loop is, is really crucial because we want to get the feedback on, on any failures in our pipeline as soon as possible. If we can react a couple of minutes after an incident occurred, it's easier to fix it and it's faster to fix it as if we will be notified a couple of days or even weeks later. And then we first have to remind ourselves, what have, have I done? What changes are now in the system as well? And the fixing can, can take a lot more time than, than it needed. If we have a look at the cloud native part, and the time to market aspect, we should leverage the potential of our cloud environment. And that can be, for example, to use the auto scaling feature. And we should not only scale our application if it's needed, but also our CI CD pipeline execution. Because if we have, for example, a big project with a lot of customer uh, developers involved and they are constantly pushing to Git and every time a new pipeline is, is triggered, at some point, if we don't have any auto scaling applied, then um, some pipelines will be either stuck or even aborted, which will then lead to manual interaction and which will increase our time to market. A cloud environment can therefore speed up the development process. We can also spin up new and short living environments for testing, for example, and then tearing it down afterwards. With cloud environments, we can make sure that we have a common environment for all of the developers and operation people. And also the high availability is, is a crucial point. It can also be, so the high availability is usually in a negotiation or given by the cloud, uh, cloud provider, depending on what availability, availability is needed. And if we want to achieve the same availability, usually on premise, it will take a lot of effort and also it will Cost much, cost much. Then the last point of the time to market aspect is with GitOps. If we are able to set up Git, GitOps properly, this really can reduce the workload of, of our operation staff. And then they 
can focus on delivering the high quality and secure applications that we want to. So they don't need to waste any time with deployments, but can can take care of, of stuff that's really necessary to be handled by by a person and not by automating something. The second aspect of this talk is the ease of installation. So how can we achieve ease of installation by using cloud native CI, CD and GitOps? And usually what we want to have is we want to have it simple and being effective in the same at the same time. So we want to keep our CI, CD pipelines simple and we want to use generic pipelines as much as possible so that we can reuse those pipelines for different services and projects by, by just using different parameters that we pass to the pipeline. Also, we want to let the cloud provider manage the infrastructure parts where it's possible and also suitable. So we need to leverage their knowledge to set up the infrastructure around our application so that when that the developers and operation staff can then focus on delivering the software. So reusing components is also, also a good point for the ease of installation because as if we can reuse a lot of things we've already done, it will be easier to, to set up our, our instances. Also with GitOps, usually GitOps is, the setup is quite easy. If we have everything in place in Git and the structure in Git is in a way that can, can be used by GitOps, um, we will see in the demo that in the most cases, or at least in the case we will show, and usually in, for other cases as well, the setup itself is easy. We just need to make sure that we have everything around set up properly. The last aspect for the webinar today is the maintainability. I think we can all agree on the fact that fixing problems shouldn't be hard, or it would be great if, it, if it's not hard. How can we achieve that? So like we already talked about, we increments that we deploy and having the early feedback to fix the problems early. Then using IAC, so infrastructure as code, to be able to spin up new infrastructures or new environments automatically will help us by maintaining our, our application and our infrastructure. So if we are able to recreate our complete infrastructure and the GitHub setup by just triggering an Ansible playbook, we will have a big advantage over having to do thousands of steps to get a new environment or the same environment up and running. And I personally am a big fan of code analysis and also with using quality gates. So in best case, aborting a pipeline because there are too many code smells is a good way to to prevent your code from having a poor quality. If you reach a point where there are too many code smells, for example, refactoring can be can be really hard and it will take a lot of time. But if we get notified um, at an early stage and can fix the problems, we can you can make sure that we don't need that much much time to to refactor and having our code in a good quality. And for the maintainability part, it's also a good idea to, to only write your code once. So we reuse as much as possible. And if the application components and services are loosely coupled, the maintaining is really easier because in comparison to, to a monolith or big applications that have a lot of dependencies, maintaining something that is loosely coupled is, is much easier. So that's it for the three key aspects. We will now have a short look on the available tools, but those are only a few. There are a lot more tools, um, but at the top we have Argo, CD and Flux. Those are the two most used GitOps solutions currently. And actually those two applications were merged into one, one application which is called Argo Flux. Um, I still have, need to have a look on, on, on the new application, but it sounds promising. So for today, we will use Argo CD as our GitOps engine in the demo. 
And at the bottom we have Jenkins X. I think Jenkins is known by a lot of people and Jenkins X is now the cloud native CI CD solution, which is based on Kubernetes and which is also based on Tekton, which is the, which is the other CI CD solution that I've mentioned here. And Jenkins X is using Tekton as the CI CD engine and is building on top of it. For the demo today, we will use the pure Tekton solution. And yeah, we actually can now dive right into the demo. I will quickly talk about what we are going to do here. So we will deploy an application that is using Tekton or by using Tekton as our CI CD engine. So we will have a pipeline that will build our application. It will push it to a Docker registry and then it will call Argo CD to syn synchronize the state that is stored in Git and the Kubernetes cluster that is our target environment. And the cluster, so our Kubernetes cluster is running on AWS. And we will now quickly start with setting up the first application in Argo CD because it will take some time to have the host name available. And after we've set up the application, we can talk a bit more about what is Argo CD doing exactly. So in the UI of Argo CD, we can now create an application. We will call the application pipeline. So this is our CI CD pipeline. We have only one project set up in Argo CD. So I can only choose default. And I will set the sync policy to automatic, which means once there's any change in Git that is not deployed to our Kubernetes cluster, Argo CD will automatically sync those changes to the cluster. So the source is a Git, a Git repository. There it is. And I will just give the path to the manifests that are stored in the GitHub repository. And the destination is our Kubernetes cluster. And I will define a namespace where we will deploy the pipelines to. So I will click create and then we will directly see that something is happening. I need to refresh. So now we have an application set up and we can see that the application is healthy, it is synced and the sync went fine. So all those resources that are now shown here were automatically applied to our Kubernetes cluster by Argo CD. So it took the manifests that are stored in Git and applied them to the Kubernetes cluster. Now we will create another application, which is our deployment application. This time we will, we will leave the sync policy to manual because we want to trigger the deployment inside our CI CD pipeline. So after we've built and pushed our application, we will then trigger the, the synchronization and the deployment. So the, the path to the deployment is called deployment. And the destination is again, our Kubernetes cluster and the same namespace in this case. So I will click create. We now have a second application. It's now stated as out of sync because it's only synced manually and we didn't sync it yet. So those manifests are available in Git, but they are not yet applied to our Kubernetes cluster. So what we want to achieve now is we have our GitHub setup. So Git setup with our pipelines and our application code and also our Kubernetes manifests for the deployments. And everything we want to do now to, to deploy is to push something to the Git repository. So as soon as we apply a change, we want the CI CD pipeline to be started and to deploy our application. In our case today, we will simulate the Git push to make it a little bit easier. So I will use the endpoint that we usually would now set up as a webhook in Git and we'll 
just run a curl on that URL. We can see that the call was fine. And in the Tecton UI, we know, should now see that we have a pipeline, but we should also have a pipeline run. So meaning the pipeline is now being executed. I can make it a little bit bigger. And we can now have a look at what exactly is being done by Tecton. So currently we are at the build stage. So we can see that our Docker image is now being built and the application. And this will take some time. So we maybe can just navigate a little bit through the Tecton UI as well. So as you already saw, we have our pipeline defined here. We can have a look at the pipeline, which actually only show, which show the pipeline run. We have several pipeline resources set up, which are actually the Git repository where the pipeline can find the code. And then we've set up an image repository. So actually it's Docker Hub to push the, the Docker image um, to the registry. We do have a task to have the integration between Tecton and Argo CD. So with this task, we can trigger the synchronization of our deployment and also some, some other stuff at the bottom, which would now be a bit too much to explain everything. But let's get quickly back to the to our build. So we can see the build was completed, the application was built, the image was pushed, which is also, also shown here. And then afterwards, the second step would be the well, is the Argo CD deployment synchronization. This was also done successfully. And we can now have a look at our deployment application and it's now being synced with our Kubernetes cluster. And we do now have an application running on our cluster just by committing or simulating a, a Git commit. And what we can do now is we just make sure that everything is running fine. I will quickly do a port forward to our application. And we can see that the application was deployed successfully. So with this way, we just deployed an application by only doing a commit and everything else was done by, by the Tecton pipeline. It has built and pushed the image, the application triggered Argo CD as our GitOps solution. And then the state was, was synchronized with our target. So, Thanks everyone. That's it for the webinar today. And now I have the time to answer any questions. In case there are any questions. I have one here um, regarding the cost factor of doing uh, continuous integration and delivery versus the more traditional approach you talked about in the beginning. Uh, have you looked at it in with respect of uh, infrastructure costs for the build deployment and so on pipelines uh, and on personal costs? Uh, will it go up or will it go down or doesn't it matter? Uh, actually, that depends on, on the application and the amount of of um, integration and pipeline runs we have, um, because then the resources are being accessed in the, at the cloud provider. But usually the pipeline should not run too long. So that's also a point that should be, should be taken into consideration. So if a pipeline run is not, not that long and it's only short lived and every resource is then teared down afterwards, the cost is not that high. And actually I personally, think the costs are higher if I have to integrate code of six months in a team of, I don't know how many people and waste their time to do the merging for several days. Uh, I think that's more expensive than, than the infrastructure cost we have. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I was, uh, uh, what, what, what was meant probably with the personal costs. So you, yes, you might have some, some higher 
uh, infrastructure costs, but uh, uh, the man power needed will be lower in the end. At least in the end. I think mm -hmm. at the beginning it may, may be a bit higher because you have to set up everything, of course. Mm -hmm. But over the time, I'm, I'm sure it will be lower than when we're doing a traditional release cycle and uh, having a lot of changes. Okay. And another one, uh, taking, uh, taking root from, from last week's webinar, uh, where your colleague uh, talked about migration paths. Uh, if you do it like, like this full blown, would you recommend looking, even looking at existing projects or would you say this is only something uh, that should be done for new projects? I think that's also something that needs to be looked at um, yeah, individually. But in my experience, especially the GitHub setup is, is really easier if you do it uh, from scratch. So with a new project, of course. Um, I think continuous integration to, to introduce it um, is usually a good idea for also existing projects. It will be an effort, but it will really uh, matter in the end. But yeah, for GitHub's, um, I have experience with new projects. I, I can think of it being difficult to, to do it uh, with existing projects because you have to consider a lot of things like um, secret management and all the stuff. But it's also possible and needs to be looked at um, individually. Okay, so the usual it depends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, third question here, uh, what about continuous integration? Is there an Argo CI? Um, there's not really, as far as I know, there's, um, you are able to do workflows with Argo and I think you're also able to, to do a build, but I used Argo only as really as a synchronization tool because that's what it's good at. Um, there are better continuous integration tools on the market. So that's why I used this approach. Ah, and another one. Uh, in which time frame normally updates will be delivered regarding, okay, he wants to know in which time frames normally updates will be delivered regarding continuous deployment several times a day, once a day, weekly, monthly? Um, that's, yeah. If the customer's fine with it, um, I think that technical if the technical part is done properly you can deploy several times a day a lot of companies are doing it um, for example the big companies like google amazon they are deploying i don't know multiple times a day to production um, i've already done it in the past at least a uh, few times a week um, there are no real limits okay there are limits but um, you are if it, everything is set up properly you are able to to really automatically deploy to production several times a day safely, but you have to have, yeah, good safety measures in place to make sure that this doesn't affect the customer uh, in a negative way. Okay, so this was so far the last question, at least, uh, that I received. Uh, so um, again, everybody, if you still want to know something, if you want to uh, ask Sebastian something, please type now. <laughs> or be forever quiet. <laughs> <laughs> or get in touch with us after the webinar, of course. Sure. Oh, there's another guest. Shall we let him in? Okay. <laughs> I think that's a bit late. Okay, uh, to whoever entered right now, I'm sorry, but uh, the webinar already is over. <laughs> so uh, we can only say that we will be publishing the whole thing uh, to our uh, web pages, I think tomorrow. And um, you may watch it afterwards. Yeah, also from my side. Thanks everyone for attending the webinar. I hope it was useful. And if there are any questions, just get in reach or in touch with us. Yeah, then same for me. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for the uh, 
for the show, uh, Sebastian, today. And uh, I hope to uh, see uh, many of you next week with the third part. Bye-bye and good evening. Thanks. Bye.